That does taste a little bit like cream cheese. And now I'm wondering if you can make cream cheese in the Instapot. What's this, Mom? It's going to be pie dough. Pie dough? What? Yep. For the chicken pot pie. I mean, we're not cooking for guests, and we're not cooking to be fancy. We're just getting dinner on the table. Hello, everyone. Welcome back to another week of videos. Tonight, we are going to be doing a chicken pot pie. The way I do mine, I make a, a double pie crust from scratch, and then it sits in the fridge for a while, and then you can shape your pie. You parbake the bottom crust, put the filling in, bake it all up. My goal today is to make it early enough that I actually have some time for it to sit and cool a little bit so that it's not all liquidy uh, inside. So I'm going to start this recipe by chopping up a whole block of butter. <laughs> this is actually kind of a fancy recipe to me. I mean, not fancy, but um, it's pricey because it uses a whole stick um, or two sticks, depending on what kind of butter you buy. Uh, and <clears throat> having high quality fats is pretty important to us, so we do splurge on this butter, but I would like to learn how to make a pie crust from lard, and I've done it a couple times, and I, I remember it being successful, but I didn't really write down what I did. I was just sort of playing around in the kitchen, and I need to get serious about it because we do get some lard every year, thanks to, uh, we do get some lard every year, from our hog purchase, and this this would be a great way to use it and save some money. Okay, this is gonna go in the freezer. Okay, now I'm gonna work on the pie dough. If you have never made pie dough before, hear me out, it's actually really easy, especially if you're using a food processor. I, like, it's so easy. Um, it is just an added step to your meal, and sometimes you have to do it a little bit ahead, a little bit ahead of time because it has to sit in the fridge for a little bit. So, I, but anyway, let me just show you how easy it can be. In here, I've got flour, salt, sugar. It's just you know blended up like normal, and then here I have sour cream. This is this is homemade sour cream, and wow, it is actually it's almost as thick as cream cheese. This is the first time I've dug into it since I made it, um, and then here I've got my water, I just put it in the freezer with the butter um, just so it could get really, really nice and cold. So I'm gonna mix the sour cream in here. Okay. I don't know where my tablespoon measure went off to. So I'm using this half tablespoon and we'll just make do. I need three tablespoons total. So six of these. Four, five, six. Wow, this really does look like Cream cheese. Mmm. Tastes more like sour cream though, for sure. Actually, I'm not gonna lie. That does taste a little bit like cream cheese. And now I'm wondering if you can make cream cheese in the Instapot. I made cream cheese once. I think it was just heavy cream strained in a cheesecloth. And it sits out for a while until it gets hard. And this is just heavy cream cultured with yogurt in the Instapot that sat for a long time. So it's almost the same thing. And now I'm gonna have to research that. Okay, side note done, let's go back to this. Yes, buddy. Okay, here's my mix. I'm just gonna set that aside for now and I'm gonna add in the butter. So you just kinda scatter it over the top here. Let me turn it so you can see a little bit better. look in there it's a pretty fine crumb let me see make sure there's no big pieces yeah that's a nice crumb okay real quick because my baby's waking up we are gonna drizzle this in and we're gonna run it while we pour it in Often it will hit a point where you're just like, is this even gonna come together, you know? Um, and it will, you just have to push past that point. So let's see. There we go. 
shape it. All right, so I'm gonna lay out these two um, wrappers. They are beeswax wrappers, and I like to wrap pie dough in them to put them in the fridge in lieu of plastic wrap. This works really well. My counter is clean, so I'm just gonna give it a dump. What's this, Mom? It's gonna be pie dough. Pie dough? What? Yep. For the chicken pot pie. Okay. This is probably much easier with two hands, but I'm just, I'm not gonna overwork it, but I just wanted to bring it into a ball. Here is the log. I'm just gonna take a guess and divide it in the middle. Is that funny? That made you giggle. <laughs> and then I'm just gonna sort of smash it into a disc. It doesn't have to be precise, but later when you roll it out and it's pretty hard from being chilled in the fridge, um, you'll want it to be in sort of the right shape. And then I just wrap it up and that's ready to go in the fridge. Okay, so now I'm going to preheat my oven to 350. I just finished cooking up those chicken thighs. They are over here. I just cooked them in a little bit of oil and see now there's this really flavorful fond in the pan. I am gonna remove some of that because it's a little too much fat, um, but then I'm going to leave some of it in there and I'm gonna cook my onions in that and I'm gonna to start to build my pot pie filling. Meanwhile, I'm gonna parbake the bottom crust. So let's get that rolled out and get our onion chopped up. I have my crust rolled up in here and I cover it with foil and I press it down really tightly. In a perfect world, I would have little pie weights, um, but we just haven't invested in those yet. So this worked fine and don't be intimidated if you don't have anything special, the foil will be fine. And then I cooked up the onions and now I'm starting to add some of the liquid and it really cooked the fond off really nicely. It smelled amazing. Is there anything better than onions cooking in a fat? It's like the best comforting smell when you're cooking a meal. Next, I'm just gonna work on shredding up the meat. Uh, this is a non-preferred task. <laughs> I don't really like this job, but it's not so bad as long as you just let your meat cool enough to where you're not burning your fingertips. Um, I definitely did not wait as long as I probably should have, but <laughs> I needed to get this done. And then everything just gets added back into the pot. Um, so you do your chicken, your frozen veggies, all of that, and you just cook it until it's heated through. And then it's pretty much ready to put in your par-baked crust. Here's the pie all ready to be assembled. And that's just about right. This is a tried and true recipe for us, but sometimes I ace the crust and sometimes it just gets the job done. <laughs> it's not pretty or anything. There are a lot of fancy ways to do pie crusts. Maybe someday I will experiment a little bit more. But this that I'm doing right here has always been fine for a weeknight pot pie. There is a little bit of extra dough around these edges. I'm not gonna worry about trimming it because I have kids that love dough. <laughs> they don't wanna don't want to try the pot pie, but they will eat extra dough. I think I was the same way as a kid, so. Just going around it again, making sure that it's sealed nicely. Then I'm gonna take a knife, and I'm just gonna give it some little vents. Cool. I think it's pretty. And it was easy. I did end up putting a rack with aluminum foil underneath this to catch any drips. And thank goodness, because this was a first. I have never had my crust melt off the edge like this. Um, but otherwise, it was delicious. So that's a new one. Gonna have to try to avoid that. Hello, everyone. Today, I'm gonna be doing a baked manicotti. It goes in this. Um, it's just a recipe for two. It's out of, let me show you. 
it is out of this cookbook. This has been one of my favorite cookbooks ever, especially when um, my husband and I were newlyweds. And then even now, some of the portions of this book are big enough to feed like two adults and a couple of kids, you know? Um, tonight I'm making the manicotti out of it and it is a tried and true. We love this, although we haven't had it in a while. It uses these no boil noodles. Um, I haven't found a better version of this product, like an organic version. If you know that there is an organic version of no boil noodles somewhere in this wide world, please let me know so I can go buy them. Um, but anyway, for today, I have these. So before I started talking to you, I mixed up, this just goes in the food processor and it's diced tomatoes and garlic and basil. I don't have fresh basil. Um, I was just at a grocery store and first off, fresh basil, way too expensive. Second off, it was all rotten. So there's none to be had anyway. Um, sour grapes, right? You know that fable? Okay, next I'm going to mix up the cheese mixture and then I'm going to get it all assembled and I'm going to stick it in the fridge for a while because I actually have to deliver a meal to another family tonight and it's going to be a totally different meal. Um, so I'm going to get this prepped, put it in the fridge, and then while I'm out doing that, my husband can just pop this in the oven and then when I get home, we can all eat. So let's get started. So I got a new tripod and my goal is to stick it here on the microwave. So please pray that um, I don't drop my phone in food. But if I do, they'll be along for the ride, I guess. You guys see? Oh! <laughs> okay, this tripod is not it. Okay, this tripod is not great. The microwave is not gonna work, so. Here you are. In this bowl, I need an egg and the cheeses and some parmesan all right measuring out this i really need to start making my own ricotta um i am never happy with the ingredients in the grocery store and i've heard it's easy but i don't quite know what you need so maybe i will learn that in the future but i, I stood there and read all of the ingredients on all of the ricotta cheeses and there are three different gums in this. Can you see this? Will it focus? Well, anyway, there's um, xanthan gum, locust bean gum, and gore gum. And it's like, how, how many do you need? So, anyway. <laughs> okay, next I need to add some of the Parmesan in here. Let's see. We will put more on the top later. We buy our Parmesan in bulk in cases, so they're still um, individually wrapped. I'll show you. We buy a case of these, and then we just shred them up, and I just keep it on hand like this. It goes in the food processor and blends down really well. Okay, I still need some mozzarella in here. Got some of that shredded up next to me. Uh, let's see. One's three fourths a cup. So let's just use a fourth, a half, three fourths ish. Now for seasoning, we just need a little bit of salt, a pinch of pepper, and then our basil. Now, absolutely, of course, fresh basil would be delectable in this, but we do not have fresh basil. And the dry basil will have a good amount of time to impart its flavor as it sits in the fridge and as it um, cooks up in the oven since it's a saucier dish. So you can get away with doing this. I mean, we're not cooking for guests and we're not cooking to be fancy. We're just getting dinner on the table. Okay, and there is our lovely filling. All right, to get these noodles ready, I put them in hot water for um, just a few minutes and they get nice and pliable. They are no boil, but of course we have to roll these, so we do have to do something to them. 
While it is boiling, the, the water anyway, I'm going to do the first step of getting this dish made up. You just put a little bit of sauce in the bottom. Even though it's dry basil, you can smell the basil so well already. It smells really good. All right, here comes the water. One thing I learned the hard way about buying these noodles in the store, when you get the box, just take it and gently tip it side to side, um, like before you buy it. Um, and then if you hear any crumbs in there, get a different box because I have definitely brought these home and they were um, chipped at the end or something like that. And then that makes them even more delicate in this process. I'm just gonna let these go. Sometimes they do get a little bit stuck to each other. So I do kind of stagger them a little bit. Um, but it's not like those rice paper wrappers in that other video. Sheesh, those things were awful. Also, while I wait, I'm going to try to split this into six sections. So I'm kind of just trying to make it into a square, rectangle, whatever. And then I'm just going to mark it out a little bit. It doesn't have to be perfect. Just so I'm not overstuffing anything. Okay, I think I can get away with starting. The rest will get better. So this is just a clean towel here. Um, you just sort of dry it off. Put a sixth of your mixture in. You leave a little bit of a lip right there. And then you just roll it on up. And then you place it seam side down in your pan. Okay. There's another one. And if they don't have to be pretty, don't stress if you get cheese on them. They're just, they're all going to be saucy anyway. I wanted to show you with these last few. Sometimes it can seem like the pan gets a little bit tight but it works out just fine. You just take them, you can kind of see from the side, and you just sort of squish them. And they will fit. There. there we go. Okay, and then to finish it off, you just pour your tomato sauce over the top. And put some more cheese on. Always more cheese. I think rolling your own manicotti can seem a little bit daunting, but this is a really quick meal. And you can make it ahead, which is just a huge win. All right. That's ready to go in the fridge, nice and saucy. We'll bake it up later. Okay, this is the next night, and the plan tonight is to do sort of a chipotle bowl um, with rice and beans and chicken thighs that are done on the grill. And I wanted to test two different marinades on this night. So one is gonna be a fajita seasoned chicken thigh, and then the other one is a cilantro lime chicken thigh. Um, they ended up both coming out really, really tasty. But the um, the cilantro lime one really just tasted like grilled chicken. It didn't, um, the cilantro and lime definitely needed to be increased. So all that being said, I did link both of the marinades down below. But if you do try this cilantro lime, I would tweak it a little bit and definitely increase the lime and the cilantro. It, the chicken was fine. It tasted good, but it just tasted like grilled chicken. Um, Okay, so now I'm going to add some honey to this, and I wanted to show you, this is the raw honey that we get from Azure, and I love that it's raw because of the health benefits, although I guess in this application we're cooking it, so we're going to lose some of that, but um, I do have to make sure it gets squished up really well or it doesn't dissolve, um, and then I end up with big clumps, but we mostly buy the raw because we make our elderberry syrup with it, and we just tolerate it uh, in other recipes like this. 
So here's the fajita seasoning one, and I have a little bit of water, olive oil, and a garlic puck in there, and that's just getting thawed. Um, and then I'm going to add the spices in, and we really love this recipe. We will make this again. Um, whenever I find a recipe that I like, I put it in a little folder, and then once a month or maybe once every two months, I sit down and I type them all out because it <laughs> drives me crazy looking at recipes that are all different formats. And it also drives me nuts when I have recipes that are more than one page, especially if they're really wordy for no reason at all. So um, I will I will take the time to condense them and write them out. And then they get printed and laminated and put in our family recipe binder. And then I'm just going to take the time to get some of the extra um, skin off of the chicken. We bought this chicken in bulk in 40-pound cases from a farm down in North Carolina. And... Um, some of these chicken thighs, the they did not take the skin off very well. And then also, um, maybe I'm just not used to cooking with boneless, skinless chicken thighs, but they seem really small and thin compared to how huge the bone-in skin thighs are. Um, but anyway, I'm just going to get these ready and put them in the bag. I guess one perk to them being thin is they cook really quick, and that was definitely needed on this night. I did not get to let these sit for very long in the marinade, and that was perfectly fine for the fajita one. It was ready to go right out of the bag. Um, but I do wonder, maybe the cilantro lime would have been better if I'd gotten in there a few hours ahead of time, but that was just not the life we were living this night. Also, while it's quiet and I'm down here and can talk to you for a minute, I just wanted to say hi to everybody that is new. There are a lot of you now, and I am blown away that people are actually hanging out here. Um, and I just, I really appreciate everyone who watches and comments. I love hearing from you guys and hearing everybody's different perspectives and how they run their houses and their kitchens. So thank you so much for being here. I really, really appreciate it. My rice finally fulfilled on our next Azure order. It's taken a few months to get it. So, okay, going back upstairs. I cooked my rice just plain with water and then towards the end um, I added lime juice and cilantro just what was left over and a little bit of salt and the rice was definitely not the main event but um, it did come out tasty enough I would definitely add more flavor next time but we were just in a rush tonight most of the flavor in this meal um, came from the chicken and also we made a corn salsa on the side this was supposed to be a chipotle copycat and I totally went rogue the recipe just it was not right. So I put the recipe for this down in the description box. Basically, I just warmed up some corn. I roasted a poblano um, that was frozen in the oven for a little while, and um, then I added it with some red onion, and it came out really, really well. And then this was just a can of black beans, our home canned black beans, and I put a little bit of cumin and some salt in there. And all in all, this be this turned into a really good meal, um, <laughs> especially for the effort that it took. We did have some store-bought guacamole on the side and it made a really pretty chipotle bowl. Oh, and that's our homemade sour cream that is almost as thick as cream cheese. <laughs> so, But anyway, we ate well on this night and we can't wait to make this again. Hey y'all, let's cook some dinner. Tonight I'm gonna make Zuppa Toscana. I don't know if I'm saying that right, but it's like an Italian sausage soup with heavy cream and potatoes. And I'm super excited for it because I need to use up onions and potatoes and I need to use up ground pork, um, which is perfect. I'm going to use that to make my sausage. And I happen to have everything else on hand. I'm even going to use, normally we do our own broths, but I was out of chicken broth and I specifically needed chicken broth for something I was making for a friend the other day. So I picked this up and I have some leftover. So I'm gonna use that up as well as some of our home broth. And yeah, let's get cooking. The first thing I need to do is get this bacon in the pot. So I'm just gonna get this going. I did end up getting these cutting boards from Target. I mentioned that I really don't like cutting my meat on the wooden cutting boards because they can't go in the dishwasher. I don't. I don't know what this is exactly. It's like some bamboo plastic thing. It was at Target and they're cheap. And I don't use it for much of anything except my meat. So I think we'll be fine. Uh, but it can go in the dishwasher. So I'm very excited about this. 
All right, while that starts heating up, I am going to make my sausage seasoning. I think I usually do like a tablespoon, I'm sorry, three tablespoons per pound. My tablespoon measure is dirty, so we're just going to, we're just going to go like this. I can link, not link, but um, I'll type out this recipe in the description box. I mentioned before that we buy our pork in bulk, and one of the ways that we get the most out of our sausage is by making the sausages that are easy at home. So our Italian sausage and our breakfast sausage, we don't um, get those pre-made for us. We prefer to have the chorizo pre-made uh, because we are not great at making our own chorizo. So if we want Italian or breakfast, we just add the seasonings ourselves. Make sure this gets all nice and incorporated. All right, while that starts cooking up, the one thing I haven't finished completely chopping is the potatoes. I did clean them up because they were looking really rough, so I cut off, you know, the eyes and all that. Um, and I can't remember if I am supposed to peel the potatoes, but we buy really nice organic potatoes, and if we, if I can help it in a recipe, I don't peel the potato. Um, it's just an added step that... I don't really have time for these days. I'm also adding more potatoes than the recipe calls for. It says five medium russets and um, I don't know, I have like seven or eight here. That's partially because I need to use them up, but also partially because we are cooking for a lot of little kids. So, you know, for the one-year-old, it's nice to just give him a tiny bit of broth and then really fill his bowl up with the potatoes. So I got this new mic uh, for my birthday, and I don't know if it's actually better. We're going to have to, we're going to have to play with it a little bit and see, but testing it out over the past few days. All right, let's go check on the bacon. This is starting to crisp up. We'll just let that keep going. All right, this looks nice. I'm gonna drain it. So the cooking method in the recipe um, is based on the fact that bacon grease tastes good and sausage grease does not. So um, they want you to take most of the bacon grease out and reserve it, and then cook your sausage in just a little bit of the bacon grease, and then drain the sausage and add the bacon grease back in. <laughs> so it's a little labor intensive, um, but let's see if we can make it easy. All right, so what I've decided to do, maybe I regret this, that's a lot of grease, it's really popping. <laughs> okay, well what I've decided to do regardless is cook my sausage in all of that bacon grease and then I'm gonna just drain all of this grease. And then I have a ton of bacon grease in the fridge that I've been having a hard time using. So I'm just going to drain all of this and then add some of that back in rather than doing the whole reserving thing. Okay, I'm going to let that get nice and brown. All right, my sausage is done. I am going to drain it. Just putting it in a colander with a paper towel underneath. They really want this to drain well. I'm a little bit picky about sausage. I'm not picky about a whole lot of things, but um, sausage is really greasy. It, it's a pretty big turn off. Okay, good. I'm glad to see that there's actually <laughs> quite a bit of grease in the bottom of this. When I was stirring it, I thought it looked like that sausage absorbed a lot of the grease. And that was quite a bit of bacon grease in there, so I was thinking that that would have been a bit excessive. All right, forgive me. This is wasteful, um, but I'm on a bit of a time crunch today, and I don't have anywhere good prepared to pour all this bacon grease or sausage grease, whatever. So I'm just going to do it the easy way real quick. All right, here I have my bacon grease. Um... I'm just going to do a 
tablespoon or so. I think it really just, the bottom of the pan has a lot of that flavorful fond, so long as I can get this cooking before it burns. Um, I think that's going to be plenty for flavor. All right, I'm going to give this a stir, and hopefully this starts loosening the fond on the bottom there. I'm going to add in my salt. Calls for about a teaspoon. As always, I will link this recipe below. This one is one from the internet. My onions are taking on a really nice color now. It smells good. Now, the next thing we have to do is add garlic. And it calls for a whole head of garlic. And I'm really glad I have this because I do not have time to peel that today. I honestly don't know how much translates into a whole head of garlic. I'm going to do these three. And I'm going to throw them in a little bit early just since they are frozen. So they have a chance to thaw and cook down properly. Starting to thaw out. I've been doing my best to keep up with dishes while we cook this so there won't be a big mess after. And it is a little bit early still, um, but tonight is the one night a week where I have something that um, runs right into dinner time. And so it's really helpful if I can have dinner made and cleaned up. And then right when I finish that thing, I can just come um, have dinner with everybody. And that way my husband doesn't have to get home and stress about what's for dinner. Um, while also taking three kids at the hardest time of day. If you know, you know. All right, now we're coming up on the step where we're going to start really adding some stuff. Here is the pepper. Maybe a little bit more. Here is the stock. And then this is our last can of broth. This happens to be a beef broth. All right, so I'm gonna give that a stir. In hindsight, I should have added the potatoes first. Now I'm gonna get splashed. I make this mistake almost every time I make a soup with potatoes in it. And I've learned this lesson and I know better, <laughs> but here we are. Probably because I'm always semi-distracted in the kitchen. All right, that wasn't so bad. And see, even with the extra potatoes, that is plenty. So now it's pretty hands off for a minute. Uh, it's just gonna simmer until these are tender. And then I'll meet you back here. All right, now I'm gonna add the spinach. We buy this um, in bulk by the case from Azure Standard. And as soon as it gets stirred in, I will add back the meats and also the cream. And then it's pretty much done. All right, in goes the cream, as well as the sausage. I'm gonna shake the bacon back in. It looks so pretty. I'll give it a good stir. And it's all done. I'm just going to put a lid on and have it sit here until dinner time. Thank you so much for watching this week. Um, I hope this gives you some ideas. And thank you for tolerating my audio quality this week. We are definitely experimenting with some things. And this new mic is not it. So, <laughs> all right. Well, I hope you all have a good week. And I will have an Azure haul coming up this weekend. Bye.